Hello everyone, this is John for PokerVIP.com and welcome to the How to Crush the Micros Snap Poker series over on Triple Eight Poker. And um, what to say about Triple Eight Poker? Well, they're one of the biggest brands in the world, um, which is always a good thing, you know. You can rely on them, the cash outs are good, um, super, you know, trustworthy site. And they've just been around for years, they're just so big, so obviously just an awesome platform. Software's really good. Snap Poker, what is it? It's just a fast forward variant, like, you know, Zoom, Rush, Speed, uh, Fast Forward, or, you know, whatever other site you play on. So lots of hands, super quick, 200 plus hands per hour. It's just a great way to, like, home your poker skills, make money, you know, clear deposit bonuses, stuff like that. And yeah, it's just the future of poker, and it's just, you know, in my opinion, the the way poker's heading. I think, you know, one day all poker will be a fast forward variant. Um, that's just my prediction, nobody's telling me that, but you know, it's getting that way across many sites now. Um, we're going to do this all at 10 and L, so it's going to be a four part series, uh, playing 5 cent, 10 cent. As you can see here, I'm making this video at quarter to six on a Friday evening, and we've got 128 people in the player pool. 2 and L all the way up to 200 and L running, so you know, plenty of games there, and there's even push off fold at 501k and L. So we're going to crack on, I'm going to talk about all the hands as and when they happen, analyse my opponents, and basically just, you know, use lines which make us the most money. You know, I definitely play an exploitative style, but I do, you know, chuck in some GTO lines along the way. So $10, always going to be rebuying for the max, um, and topping up to the max, and off we go. You can fold and watch as well, but it's very quick, very sleek, under the gun here, going to go ahead and raise it up. Uh, my opens will always be 3x uh, from all positions and then min raising the button. Some top tips, well don't fast forward too quick, you know, we want to be opening this 10 jack off in the cut off, even though it is tempting to just go ahead and you know, fold and wait for a better hand. 7 uh, 8 here, pretty close versus this guy, but we are in position and it is a hand that flops well, even though he does only have about, you know, 50 big blinds to start the hand. Sadly though we get probably the worst flop possible for this kind of hand, so it's just going to be a fold to a C bet. <clears throat> Lots of junk hands there, blind versus blind, but queen nine suited here, one of those hands we want to wait around for and open the button. Remember, people fast forward super quick, you know, in small blind and big blind, so we don't want to be missing those button opportunities. We still want to be hanging around, opening those buttons with a good opening range and making money. Also, flopping flushes helps. <laughs> going to go ahead and just half pot this. Jack six, I think we've got the best hand, going to use it as a bluff catcher. If he bets, I will go ahead and call, but he just checks it down and we win. With that jack six, it's just not strong enough to bet, and it's not weak enough to turn into a bluff either. So um, definitely fine to just go ahead and you know use it as a bluff catcher. Two um, standard opening hands here. Take it down with the king jack. And by the way, I have no experience in these ten and L snap games. I have not made videos at this level or anything like that. So this is the first time I'm playing them. So we're gonna learn the game. And learn the games along the way. How people play, how we should play. And yeah, it'll just be a journey for myself as well. King 7 is pretty close, blind versus blind. Obviously, once it's open, though, we're going to fold. Jack 9 is definitely a button open. And now if somebody's limped, I'm just going to go ahead and I think I'll, I'll isolate this. I think Jack 9 is a good enough hand to be isolating players. And essentially what isolating is, is once you see a weak player limp, you want to go ahead and raise to either get it heads up versus them or get them to fold. Interesting spot here because this guy has gone ahead and made a re-iso. Um, he could have a strong hand, he could have nothing. But we've just never played versus all gunner 20. So we're going to go ahead and give him the benefit of the doubt and fold. Five's there, really horrible run out for our hands, so just going to go ahead and muck it. So yeah, no big pots yet, nothing going our way, but we just remain patient. Some junk hands here in the big blind. We get a walk on one table, which is nice. Not often you get walks in 2016. So, you know, as you can see, we're just playing, you know, hundreds and hundreds of hands um, each and every hour. Six or two is going to be fold in the small blind. But ace queen is going to be in open. And we've got a nice hand here, king queen suit on the button as well. And we just stick to the min raise. We stick to the min raise if you have a strong hand or a weak hand, just always keeping it the same. Um, interesting flop here, but this guy does not have much. I'm just going to bet pretty large. Um, and just obviously not think about folding. Peel the three bit here with king queen suit, but flop really poorly. 
Um, if there was one heart on this flop, I would definitely float if he's bet, because I'd have the gut shot and the back door nut flush draw, or, or flush draw if it's the ace of hearts out there. Once he checks, so I'm going to check. I think I'm just going to check down here. I think he's going to have lots of hands which are like bluff catching. We make the straight here and he bets pretty large. Um, if he did flop a flush, then it sucks, but I think we're just going to raise here and hope he calls with two pair or a set. And he actually has the same hand. Fair enough. But, um, you know, our hands are just too, way too strong to just flat call there. You know, we can't be too scared of that flush once it's played that way. And I think the sizing was good. We could even go slightly bigger to make it look like a bluff. But uh, we wanted a call. We didn't want to scare him off. Seven deuce, button limps. We're just going to be check folding. A6 suited here. Pretty interesting spot. I think I'm just going to go ahead and call. See the flop. And I think we can lead here. I think leading with, you know, back doors and, you know, winning straight draws is a good idea, plus the overcard. I think it's definitely something we should have in our leading range, even though it doesn't crop up a lot. And we do actually just take that down, which is good. But basically, when I'm leading there, it's because I just have a lot of turn cards, which improve my hand. So Jack here, I think we're just going to go ahead and try a three bet versus this under the gun min raise. The min raise confuses me slightly. Um, he goes ahead and calls, we get an ace, ace, king. I'm going to bet super small here. Essentially making it look like I have the nuts. Uh, we turn a jack. Pretty close spot to if we continue betting or if we check. Just because he can have lots of kings in his range. Um, he could have an ace, but I think I'm just going to go ahead and bet again here. Just think he's going to have some like king tens, king jacks, king queens. And um, Bordron's out when we make a straight. The only problem is what ace does he have that calls? Maybe like ace nine, but I still think that folds. And by the looks of it, if he's called me on that flop on that turn, he might have a full house here. So I'm just going to check my straight back. And he actually had ace-9, which was probably the only ace that would call. We got a bit lucky there, but that's cool. I'm going to go ahead and squeeze the ace-10 suited. Mindy calls, who's only got $2 back. I think I'm just going to check give up here. It's just not a good flop for us and a pretty good one for them. Ace four, we're going to go ahead and just call, see a flop. Kev's only got four dollars, so I've got to be careful when I'm squeezing. Flop bottom pair, some backdoor draws, so I'm probably going to see a turn card. We do see a turn card because it is checked round. I think I'm just going to opt to check here. I think Stupino might have a lot of pocket pairs in his range, which we do not beat. Now we might have the best hand unless he does show a hand like sixes or sevens. If I see we're going to raise. And yeah, we do take it down versus Queen 10. And a worse hand that Stepino had. Get jammed on here. It's going to be a fold. Daddy Mac. That was such a big name back in the day. Um, Over on, I think it was Ladbrokes or something. Some sick tournament player who just won tournaments every day was called Daddy Mac. Kings and King 10. Hands we're going to be playing. Going to go ahead and raise. What's a good size here? 2460. Something, I think, 73 is, is about right. Obviously, could just be a bit less lazier and type it in, but 73 looks good. King 10, we don't flop anything. This guy's only got 188 back and he's led. I'm just going to go ahead and float here. We're getting a good price. We might have the best hand. Kings, we get a pretty bad flop and pretty wet, so we're just going to go ahead and bet and take it from there. King 10, we're going to call for a straight draw. Uh, Kings, I'm going to check. King 10, we'll get a check. Actually made two pair kings here. I don't know if I get much worse to call. So it's going to be a check. Maybe a nitty check there. But uh, there's really very few hands that I can get which are better than mine to fold. And some which are worse than mine to go ahead and call. So I'm going to just check. I think I can go for a pretty good three bet here. we got an ace. Block some big hands, you know, big blind versus small blind versus button. Um, you know, the button's going to be opening a lot, small blind's going to be three betting a lot, so good spot here. Well done, donkey, says this guy. Pretty interesting thing to say to me. Get called, we flop top top. Probably going to have the best hand here a lot versus hands like eights and nines. Um, if he is playing a hand like jacks or queens like this way, he's going to get all of my money. But, you know, if he does have that, well, we have top top and we can hit an ace or a ten. Going to go ahead and bet here, 164. And essentially the line here will just do e to bet, bet, bet. Great turn card for us there if he was floating with ace-queen or ace-king, ace something like that. And also if he did have a hand like jacks or queens. 
It now means we definitely have the best hand. Gonna bet super small here because this is what I would do with my bluffs, because we can represent that ace if we believe he's got jacks or queens a lot. And we are in a spot with nothing. He check jams, we call. He's got 6-4 of clubs. Um, <laughs> Thanks, mate. Yeah, poker's not dead. Triple eight poker, ladies and gentlemen. Get signed up now. The link is in the comments and by the side. Um, I think he has just read Gus Hansen's book and basically just went crazy. There is nothing good in what he did there. I guess we can maybe pat ourselves on the back for such a small bet because it gives him the idea of fold equity. Yeah, not his finest moment there. You know, not his finest moment at all. So I'm just going to check back, try and get to showdown. Good run out for us. Um, let me just get a check. God, that felt good. <laughs> the old 6 4. The old 6 4. He made quite a lot of mistakes in that hand. Um, but I have heard that this goes on a lot on this site, which is why I thought we'd make the uh, video series over on here. Because that is something else. Lots of folds here, guys. Uh, this guy limps the button. We know he's pretty weak, so we're just going to raise ace five here, get it heads up versus him. If he folds, that's fine. If he calls, it's fine. You know, pretty much whatever. Terrible flop for us. This is the problem with, you know, playing these hands this way. But um, ace five is going to be good a lot of the time. We turn the royal flush draw, so it'll be a check call situation if he bets. I don't want to check jam. Uh, what do I want to check jam? No, I think he just calls so much, so I'm just going to call and try and basically hit. People like to say, realize my equity. You know, they just mean they want to hit. We'll keep it simple around these parts, guys. Definitely, personally, out of practice with these types of games. I play kind of like higher stakes and, you know, one or two table versus very random players. But Triple Eight's also awesome for that. They have, you know, 200 L, 400 L running daily. Um, both regular format and 200 L for Snap, of course. So there's plenty of money to be made. Oops, absolutely misclick there. Just meant to min raise with the ace nine suited, but whatever. We're crushing, guys. We're up over a buy-in already, and we have done nothing special at all. Good, simple winning poker. Nines there, pretty bad flop. Yeah, just check back. We might have the best hand, we might not, if he bets, I'll fold. He checks, I'm just going to check again, and now if he bets the river, I'll call, even though he could definitely bet a jack, but we're going to check here. He actually had king 10, he was just trying to get there for free, which is fine. Ace-8 suited, we're going to call. I think I might lead this flop as well. I don't think this guy's going to want to float too often with non-made hands, because this guy's only got 370 back. Um, so I think Carlos only really continues if he is pretty strong here. He does continue, and we see the 10 on the turn. So I'm going to continue to bluff here. I'm going to assume he's got a pocket pair in his hand, and we're going to rep a straight, a 6, or better. And if we hit a 9 or an ace, then we're going to go ahead and value bet. He goes ahead and checks. It's pretty close here, because I don't know how often he is going to fold the river, but once we do bomb um, flop and turn, then we should just go ahead and complete the story. Just if this guy is basically thinking, you know, well enough to go ahead and fold. He actually calls with jacks, which is fine. But what I will do is when I do have one of the hands I mentioned, I will take exactly that same line. So we do remain, at least stay balanced there. And also if he has a hand like eights or nines, it puts him under a ton of pressure. Um, also if he just has a hand like a seven. So we're not just assuming this guy has like jacks, queens, kings, or aces. We assume he can have one pair of hands and one pair of hands which, you know, really struggle to go ahead and call that river. And I think the sizing was pretty perfect throughout. I'm going to go ahead and represent this ace I flop. Let me check once I'm called and just shut down here. No time wasting, we just crack on with the next hand. <laughs> lots and lots of hands. Absolutely love it. I'm definitely an action junkie, so these fast fold variants really do suit me. What's this little thing? Okay. Oh, you can sit out from tables. That's pretty cool. I'm going to go ahead and defend. 4-6 uh, suited here. We've just been slagging it off, but it's cool. going to go ahead and squeeze, even though we know JM's only got 50 big blinds to start the hand. King Jack is definitely and I prefer to squeeze than to call with. Get check my 4-6. Get caught in two spots here, flop a gut shot, but against this guy, and against this guy's only got a pot size bet. 
I'm going to go ahead and check. I'm going to bet my straight draw with a 4-6 suited. Also, I probably would have just bet a ton of turns there if I got checked to again, because 6 high is just not going to win at Showdown. Check 4 a fold. Hanging around, you see, in the small blind. It is so tempting to just go ahead and fast fold, but you know, we, we have to be opening these aces blind versus blind. We just have to do it. We get called here. I'm going to go ahead and just bet. Ace Jack is pretty close between a 3 bet and a call. I'm going to go up to 3 bet. We get raised here, which is really interesting, um, but I think we're just going to have to fold our ace 5. Ace Jack, we flop a good shot back down a flush draw, so I'm going to go ahead and bet here, even though he does have some kings and queens in his range. We can also have lots of hands like 8s, 9s, and 10s. He calls pretty quick, so he's going to have a like, ace queen, king queen, and possibly ace king sometimes, but I do block a lot of these hands I'm mentioning. So I'm going to go ahead and bluff here again, and basically just bet a lot of rivers. I just this probably check raises king queen here, um, to check call ace queen one more time, and to basically then go ahead and fold most other hands. Which he does, he just goes ahead and folds. You know, if he's got like Queen 10 suited there, it's really tough for him to continue. So I prefer barreling in that spot when his range, even though strong, should be weak enough to go ahead and fold. Danny Max got 100 big blinds. And we flop really poorly. We could turn our hand into a bluff here, but I'm just going to check down. So no big deal. Ace 10 here. Mm, interesting mid position versus small blind. We are deep though, so I can put him under a bit of pressure. So we're going to go ahead and 3 bet. We have some good blockers in our hand. Looks pretty strong as well when you open mid position and someone 3 bets. Uh, the small blind flop, awesome. So just going to go ahead and bet pretty big. And take it down. Lots of hands he can float with there. And he's going to have some ace jacks, ace queens, and ace kings in his range, so definitely don't want to slow play. Want to charge his draws, want to get him to call if worse. No need to do anything else but to just bet and bet strong. King Queen suit under the gun we're gonna open. Uh, we fought really well here, good shot and flush draw plus overs. Just gonna go ahead and make a three quarter pot size bet. Turn top pair, straight draw, flush draw with it, so I'm just gonna to continue to bomb. Defend your king eight suited, pretty standard. We take a king queen suit one down. I think there's definitely lots of hands that can keep calling us, so that's why I'm continuing to bet. King 8, we flop second pair, gonna go ahead and call. Gonna call his turn as well, because he's gonna bet a lot of his diamond X hands. Uh, semi buffs, he actually checks, so I'm gonna go ahead and bet here. Uh, not too big, but essentially I just wanna protect my hand. He calls, I think we're gonna have the best hand a good amount of time. I don't think we need to bluff, so I'm just gonna check back. Yeah, Chaz Jack, so a pretty good turn call from him there. Not an easy one to make. Go defend with 7-9 off here versus a weaker looking player due to stack size. Uh, I'm going to opt to bet my 9 high and my straight draw. I think it's better than check calling because that can happen. We can get them to fold. And when people fold it's a very good thing when you have 9 high. Jack 8 suit in the cutoff. I will open if it folds to me. Which it does, and which we do. Lots of easy hands here to just go ahead and muck. You know, and don't don't ever get impatient, you know. Just because you're playing fast forward, you're still going to get a string of poor hands from time to time. It's just going to happen. So just chill out, sit back, relax. And play really good poker. So far, so good. Obviously, the bluff of face 8 didn't work. But I think the line itself made good sense. If you've got any questions or any comments, please leave them below. And also as well, please leave a star rating review. And we're going to open. Queen Hands are going to fold there, small band versus mid position. 4-6 suited. It's been the hand of the video so far. I'm going to go ahead and open in the cutoff. It's not that loose to do so. King-6 off, I fold on the button. King-6 suited, I would open. Or maybe King-7 off plus, I would go ahead and open. Get three bets. We're going to muck. And just going to continue to fold. 
But yeah, um, for my first experience in these games, I absolutely love it. I like the table. I like the futuristic feeling. I think it's really cool. All thumbs up from me. And the players are really bad. Yeah, I mean, I think you guys have seen that as well. There is just so much money to be made here. I believe hoods do work. And hand tracking works. I just always make videos without using a hood. Because I'm just not a hood user. Um, or as much as I should be. Queen 7 we're going to fold. I'm not going to defend. It's 3 deuce, we're going to fold as well. Get 3 bet here with our ace, even though we have an ace in our hand, I'm just going to opt to fold. It's just a very tough hand to play in a 4 bet pot, a 3 bet pot, or even generally just in a lot of open pots. So we're just going to get out of the way with that. 8 10 suited, really nice playable hand on the button on table 1. I don't really care what anyone does. You know, I would call a 3-bet if they just call out C-bet flops. So we're just going to go ahead with that plan. I think half pot does the job. Um, well, I know it does the job. My button win rate and my um, continuation like success rate in that spot with that sizing is phenomenally high over the years. couple of hands here I'm going to uh, open or go ahead and 3-bet. Three bit of jack queen. Obviously, we block jacks, queens, ace queen, king queen, king jack, ace jack. Um, so we're just gonna get a ton of folds, knowing that we block so many big hands that he would go ahead and four bet us with. Jack queen off in mid position is good to open. Sometimes fold under the gun, depending on the table. Depending on the table, we'll get a call from the button. Pretty bad flop, but we're gonna go ahead and bet. I think three calls is fine, and we're gonna bet pretty much every single turn as well especially this one and we're just going to tone our sizing down a little bit because we're going to assume he's got a mid pair here sixes through to eights or nines maybe um seven's not ideal because four six gets there and so does um pocket seven so i'm just going to bet small here if he raises our fold assuming that he's got a full house wow he actually flipped me for queen so pretty unlucky there but we definitely want to be value betting that river go defend ace four suited flop top pair and a backdoor straight flush draw and uh, not flush draw so Gonna be a very obvious check call, but yeah, that that jack queen is just totally standard. I'm gonna uh, go ahead and bet the turn. River's pretty close here. Not too sure what he's got. Maybe a ten. So I'm gonna bet to get called off those types of hands. Don't know how many threes this guy's got. Hmm. He just folds. That's fine. Prefer a call from a weak hand, but we won the pot. Aces, lovely to see. Let's go ahead and pump it up. A uh, little 3-bet squeeze steal spot here with the Jack King on the button. Interesting that we get called by peace of mind with a player behind. Ace is no action. Sometimes happens. Uh, yeah, we're going to shut down here. They're going to just have so many sets and pairs which connect so well with this board. Uh, we're just going to check back. Hope to hit a Jack or a King on the turn, but generally we're done with this pot. Multi-way. It's just going to be tough. A7, I'm going to go ahead and C-bet. I have backdoor draws, and a size is going to be good a lot, so if he even folds a hand like 9-10, that's good for us, because 9-10 has equity versus our hand. Check there, like I say, we're just giving up. Generally, the idea is they fold pre, and then post what we just have to play, you know, good and solid, basically. Nine ten. I'm actually going to bet here because I've got a good shot, and I also own sixty percent of a straight flush here. So why not? You know, if he sat there with sevens, he's kind of like, meh, got to fold. He actually raises, which is interesting. It's a really large raise. Um, not too sure which hands he's doing that with. Looks like I'm completing some challenges here, which I know will probably mean money or tickets or something cool like that. Seven ten suited. This guy's gone ahead and forexed it, but I'm pretty religious with my big blind, so I'm going to go ahead and peel with the hand that can flop well enough, and then check flop this flop. Seven eight suited. Let's go multi way flop top pair. Going to go for a check call. Leading range here: ace three, ace five, five six, uh, six eight. Hands like that would be, would be really cool. Top pair is just going to be a check call. I'm also going to check call this turn because I think he's going to represent these kings a lot. He actually checks, which worries me a little bit. That he might have like eights plus, but we're just going to check here and see what happens. King flop top pair. Just going to go ahead and I think we actually might play this one a little bit deceivingly. What did this guy have? This guy had ten jack. 
he should definitely be barreling that turn. So yeah, the King 8, I'm basically trying to induce bluffs. Which happened and worked, but then the turn was pretty bad. He then snap checks though, which means I might have the best hand. Just really hoping this goes to showdown. If he bets, I will fold though, thinking that he might have two pair, which he checked the turn with. Really quite confusing. Really quite confusing. Why would he check a straight two pair? Would he still bet? Maybe. I'm just going to err on the side of caution and fold that one. Ace three, open blind versus blind, but got a board which, you know, suits him and doesn't really suit us, so I'm just going to give up. Just going to wave the white flag. Going to open the king seven off. It's pretty borderline. But in these fast forward games, you know, I remember making like, I think it was a speed video or something about two years ago, and everyone was on about how often you should open the button. It was actually the cutoff, which was the spot to open because the button folds so often. And, you know, they were still fast folding, and, you know, if they were hanging around and you open the cutoff, they assume you've got a strong hand. So we were just printing money opening the cutoff. So it's definitely something to remember um, still to this day. But it's not just the button you want to abuse. The cutoff is also a very special special position in these fast fold variants. Ace King, let's go ahead and raise. I think we can see a big pot here. It's been a solid session. You know, a couple of things haven't gone our way, but it is what it is. Uh, pretty interesting here. We are deep. Um, you know, the positions are pretty wary. But basically, once this guy overcalls, I'm going to go ahead and. Th uh, four bet and not fold and I think my sizing you know is pretty good for that and um, we block aces and kings we're going to be flipping 30% whatever a lot um, or just a favorite versus ace queen so I'd rather just go ahead and make that four bet three way uh, but heads up I might have just called there in position call blind versus blind flop top pair on a paired board going to be a pretty easy call turn's going to be a call as well and I'm probably going to call pretty much every single river uh, just because I expect him to rip a lot of runouts not the best run out, but I think I'm going to go ahead and hero call here. You know, he might have had like Jack Queen, Ace Jack, something like that, but uh, once he checks, I don't like it at all. <laughs> but my hand's just too strong to turn into a bluff. Yeah, has Jack 9, so our read was right. Ace Jack, Ace 10, sorry, we're just going to see that here. Wet board, hand protection. Get quickly called by the small blind. I think I'm going to have the best hand a lot here. So I'm just going to continue to bet, and I'll probably just check back a lot of rivers. He actually folds. Okay, that's fine. King Queen, we open and we get three bet. It's gonna be a defend here. Our hands are so strong, and you know it blocks so much of what he's repping. Um, we flop top pair, so we are probably always just going to call down here. Um, even if you bet bets jams, you know it's just strong. It's well, you know, well disguised strong hand. Good turn card for us there. Does bring the back door flush draw, but that's okay. He checks turn. I'm going to bet river pretty pretty sizably, and if he jams, I'll probably fold, thinking he's got like tens or something. But I expect I have the best hand here, pretty much always, and I want a call. Gonna play the um, the last couple of hands. Gonna start with the next big blind. All these videos will be thirty minutes long, and like I said, it's a four-part series, so that should definitely keep you going and show you everything they have to offer. I think that's a small winning session. Obviously, a couple of hands didn't go our way. Maybe a mistake with the Ace Eight bluff, or maybe we just got caught. Um, but yeah, solid session. Definitely haven't lost money, which is always good. 9-10, very obvious blind versus blind open. Going to bet here with my third pair and gut shot. I think it's just slightly better than checking. Going to go ahead and ISO this weak limper in the cutoff. If this guy raises me, I will probably call just because it wouldn't make much sense for him to have what he's wrapping. So I'm going to check. I think he's probably going to have some weak queens, some, some kings possibly, or maybe some flush draws. I think I might check call this river. He actually checks back there, which is fine with a hand that beats mine. Just because he could have a lot of flush draws there. A say we're gonna check and we're probably not gonna fold if this guy bets the turn. And we're never gonna fold this river. And yeah, we win versus King 5. So that guy's just <laughs> that guy can be marked, you know, a donkey or something like that. Um Jack's here. 
pretty decent hand to see in the cutoff. Going to go ahead and three bet the short stack and not think about folding. <laughs> I like this little donkey sign. How cool is that? So visible. You know, instantly see that. Oh, yeah, this is good. This is good, guys. We've got some dead money in the pot now. Let's just see, like, uh, that's not the fault we wanted to see, was it? I'm going to check, and basically, if this donkey just bets or whatever, I'm not going to fold. But I am quite worried about this Melanek. Okay, so if he folds, I call. I'm going to assume he's going to have worse hands. Shame, but we'll fold and watch. It's actually ace-5 versus 8, so wow. Ah, we would have pinned the jack. Unbelievable. But we made we made the correct fold. We made the correct fold, guys. What can you do? Wouldn't have been correct though if the first guy folded and we called it off, but I think that guy's just gonna have so many draws and so many second type pairs that it's just profitable to call that with jacks with uh, one over card, basically. Okay, we're just gonna click sit out next hand because this big blind's taking some time. We'll be here all day. Ten jacks suit under the gun though, definitely an open and would call a three bet uh, pretty much versus any position. So that was part one of how to crush the micro stake snap games over on Triple Eight Poker. Um, please leave a review, please leave some comments, and I'll see you for part two. This is John for PokerVIP.com.